This is Raider News with Caleb Brady and Kelsey Ames with the news, Amber Simmons with Arts and Entertainment, and Trevor Skeens with sports. And now from Studio B at Scotch Plains Fanwood High School, Caleb Brady and Kelsey Ames. Hello and welcome to the October edition of Raider News. I'm Caleb Brady. And I'm Kelsey Ames. Raider Nation recently prompted school administration to change bowling laws in relation to sports games. Let's go on location with Mr. Miller and Cameron Smith. Cam Smith on location with Mr. Miller. Mr. Miller, tell me about um, the new rules regarding bullying in sporting events. Um, the NJSIA uh, has put out some rules that in the event that a fan, an athlete, uh, a coach uh, makes any kind of harassing comments that they can be ejected from the facility and if it's a fan, the, the team can actually have negative uh, penalties assessed to them for their behavior. Okay. How recent have these rules been assigned? September 1st this year. And they're looked at really seriously now? They are looked at seriously, and it's not to say that we didn't seriously look at fan behavior, player behavior, coach behavior in the past, but this has put a new accent on it, and it, it certainly has upped the, uh, up the ante for punishment for students who don't say or do the right things. Has there been any severe consequences for players, coaches, or uh, fans yet? Uh, not here at Scotch Plains Fanwood High School, nor do I expect us to have any. Uh, I would think that our fans and players and coaches will uh, behave well inside of the rules. Um, but and there hasn't been one brought up statewide yet, but I'm sure there will be. Thanks, Mr. Miller. Back to the studio. Over the summer, SAD, or Students Against Instructor Decisions, went to Florida with advisors Ms. Weigel and Ms. Fitzgibbon. They attended a conference to find out how to make SPF a safer and better place for students to live in. Let's go on location with Matt McGowan, who found out more. Hi, I'm Matt McGowan. I'm interviewing Lucy Hollander and Caitlin Flood. So, Lucy, what's your role in the club? I'm the Vice President of Operations. And I'm the Vice President of Marketing and Communication. So, uh, Lucy, what is this club about? It's uh, Students Against Destructive Decisions, so it's all about anti-drug, anti-distracted or drunk driving, anti-bullying, and anti-alcohol. And so, who are the main members? Our main members are Julia Lavelle, Rachel Shack, Amanda Marcus, Mia Rossi, myself, Lucy, and Nick Patel. Okay. So, um, who runs this club? Uh, Mrs. Fitzgibbon and Mrs. Weigel. Now, back to the studio. Helping Hands Club started the high school this year. Let's go on location with Amani Nathaniel. Hi, I'm Imani Nathaniel. I'm on location with Caroline Ross. She is the president of Helping Hands. So, Caroline, can you tell me a little bit more about Helping Hands? Well, um, we got our start last year in um, early, um, let's say, January. And what I did, um, I met with the mayor of Fanwood, who's uh, Colleen Marr, Mayor Colleen Marr, and um, I presented her with the idea, and she was on board right away. And um, then I came and met with Dr. Heisey, and after we had an interview with him, we were considered a real club at the high school. And um, what we do, I know that would be a smart thing to explain, is... Um, we are just trying to help out seniors because I realize that they're kind of a part of the population that are not being ignored but neglected in the fact that they are doing like chores by themselves that they necessarily can't do to their, you know, the greatest extent that's possible. So we just wanted to go to their house and like do yard work and, you know, even just like sit down with them and give them like um, just um, someone to like keep them company. So that's really what we're trying to do. Well, thank you, Caroline. Now back to the studio. Bullying seems to have become a word far too common in schools across the country. Last week, our very own Ms. Taggart informed grades 9 through 12 about the new bullying laws here in New Jersey. Let's go on location with Caleb Rembert, who found out more. Hello, I'm Caleb Rembert with Ms. Taggart. So, how are you doing, Ms. Taggart? I'm doing good today. Glad to speak with you. Um, especially because we've always had bullying laws in the state of New Jersey, but this is a new one, and it's a change from our old one, and there are a lot of things that are different. Um, one of the biggest changes is that things that were suggested in the past in our building laws are now mandated or required. Some of those requirements, so things that we're doing brand new, um, is that we're required to investigate formally any complaint about bullying, harassment, or intimidation, whether it comes from a student, a parent, or a teacher. Um, one of the other big changes is that we have a new definition of bullying. And for students, that's important because it includes things like electronic bullying, it also includes bullying outside of school, um, and it also includes uh, things like a single incident or a series of incidents. So that's also a change. 
Um, it also requires all of our staff members to report. So in the past, you needed to tell a principal or vice principal. Now you could tell anyone in the building, including our custodial staff, our lunch staff, mm. all the way up to our principal. So you can let anyone know if you feel harassed, intimidated, or bullying, and then we would look into it. And this is a big change. If it occurs outside of school, but we become aware of it at school and it's having an effect to our school day, the student will be consequenced the same as if they had done the act in school. That's only for harassment, intimidation, and bullying. It's not for other things. And it's only if it becomes aware to us in the school and if it has an effect. But kids should know that they should be careful with what they're doing outside of school, what they're doing online, because if we find out about it, we have to take care of it. Seniors recently took part in a drunk driving simulation supported by the Fanwood Police Department. Let's go on location to find out more. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jenny Tyler here on location with Stephen D. Giuseppe at the Focus on Safety Driving Initiative. What was it like driving the car? Uh, it was pretty fun. Uh, it gives you a real life experience on what it's like to drive while you're drunk. And what exactly is it like driving the car? Uh, it's pretty crazy. Like You just like lose control of the car and I can't even imagine what that would be like at a higher rate of speed. What I'm asking you to do is don't drink and drive. All right? Just don't do it. One drink, if you're under 21, you're going to get a DUI. One drink. Two drinks, I'm probably going to smell it right away and I'm just going to pull you out of the car because I can do that. On every car stop, I'm allowed to take you out of the car. I can test you. And if you're under 21, I'm going to go through these tests, but I don't have to. I know that if you've been drinking, even if you don't admit to it or you do admit it, I know in the back of my head, handcuffs are going on. Hi, I'm Jenny Tyler here on location with Officer Bernard at the Focus on Safety Drunk Driving Initiative. How exactly does this benefit the students? Well, you benefit the students. Uh, you guys actually get to experience what it's like to be under the influence and operate a vehicle and do a sobriety test without actually drinking alcohol. You get to experience what we do on a daily basis on the test. Uh, when we pull you over, field sobriety tests such as heel to toe, uh, stand and balance. Um, you guys get to see what your your friends and your um, buddies look like under the influence without actually drinking alcohol. So I think it's going to help you in college next year in two years when, you, when you're going to be around alcohol and it's going to help you maybe make a better decision before you uh, operate your car. A new school year means time for a new leader for Raider Nation. Last year, Mike Remper headed the school spirit. His enthusiasm and distinguishable voice will never be forgotten. But this year, for 2013-2014, it's James Letiri's turn. He's already taken the school to a whiteout in Westfield, as well as several other events. Our very own Trevor Skeins caught up with James Letiri to find out more. I'm here with James Letiri, one of the leaders for Raider Nation. So James, do you feel any extra pressure knowing that Mike Remper did such a good job last year, now that you're trying to follow him up? Well, uh, being that Mike Grumpter did do such a great job and he had the ability to get everybody to games, I feel that there is a little bit of extra pressure uh, getting people to games and informing people about games and everything like that. So what unique aspects are you looking to bring to Raider Nation this year? Um, I would say just like a get like freshmen involved and have people come to the games and uh, get involved with the school because freshmen don't really like do anything as you got some right there. Um, I don't know, just to have a good time, I guess. Just to support our teams and have fun with it. What are some upcoming games that you're really looking forward to this year? Uh, the next Westfield game for the boys and girls, um, I think it's October 8th, I think it is. Mm -hmm. um, the girls won 2 nothing, and then the boys lost in double overtime, one nothing. So that, that should be exciting. Um, the Westfield football game, Cranford football game, um, and then the winter sports and spring sports. So we got a couple, couple good seasons coming up, and a couple more games coming up that are going to be pretty good. And then, of course, the playoffs. So, it looks forward. It looks to be a good time. All right. Awesome. Thank you. Now back to Kayla and Kelsey at the studio. And now on to Amber Simmons with Arts and Entertainment. Thanks, Kayla. What's happening in October? On Tuesday, October 15th, National Honor Society will be held in the auditorium from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. On Wednesday, October 16th, Jack Rankings will be speaking in the auditorium from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Jack Rankings is a high school and college coach as well as, well as an athletic director. His presentation he will be showing us is called Recruiting Realities. He will be presenting the facts about recruiting student athletes, their families, coaches, and school counselors. On October 19th, the Raider Fest will be held on the soccer field after the homecoming football game. Lastly, on October 25th, the BSU will be having their annual fashion and talent show, which will be held in the auditorium from 7.30 to 10 p.m. On the first Friday of the new school year, the entire student body gathered together at Perry Tyson Field for an opening assembly. Let's see some highlights from that assembly. So hot that I melted, I fell right through the cracks. And 
trying to get back Before the cool time run out I'll be giving it my bestest Nothing's gonna stop me but divine intervention I reckon it's against my turn To win some or learn some But I won't hesitate No more, no more It cannot wait Now let's go on location with Leah Barney, who caught up with faculty member of the month, Ms. Toto. Hi, I'm Leah Barney here with Ms. Toto, faculty member of the month for October. So, Ms. Toto, how does it feel to be the new varsity cheerleading coach for the high school? Well, I feel very honored. Um, I love cheerleading, so to be the cheerleading coach here, um, it was very exciting for me because I love this school and I'm happy that I get to um, add to the experience. Oh, great. So what is your prior experience with cheerleading? Um, I've cheered my whole life. I've cheered since I was a very little girl. I cheered in high school competitively. Um, I cheered one year in college. And then I also coached when I was in high school, like a Pop Warner team. Um, so I have a lot of experience. <laughs> oh, great. And what do you like to do in your free time? Um, I don't get much free time, but when I do, um, I usually find myself watching cheerleading videos or like thinking of things to show the girls and try at practice. Or um, I'm a big sports fan, so I'm either watching baseball or football. I hope to get to a couple Giants games this year, so that's my free time. <laughs> Great, thank you so much. Up from the blue and white, hey, Raider team, all the way! Now let's go on location with Amani Nathaniel, who caught up with Student of the Month, Vic Gatte. On location with Vic Rot Gatte. He is this month's Student of the Month. He's a senior. So Vic, how does it feel to be Student of the Month? Uh, you know, it feels great. It feels great to get uh, recognized for your achievements and um, getting the title of Student of the Month. You know, it's something that's very prestigious, I guess. So tell me about your student pilot's license. Um, well, this summer uh, what happened was I actually got to go down to uh, Houston on a scholarship from the um, Black Pilots of America. And I got 22 hours of flight time and over 40 hours of ground school. And I do have my um, student pilot's license now, which means I can fly an aircraft, uh, general aviation aircraft, with um, one other person, uh, an instructor, um, in the car. And I do hope to get my actual private pilot's license this spring. So tell me a little bit about DECA. Um, well, DECA is one of my uh, one of the clubs that I'm in, and I am director of business development. Um, what happened was I joined last year, and um, we won uh, the state competition. We came first in the state, and then because of that, uh, we made it to nationals in California. And we, when we were there, we made it uh, international, uh, made it to the international finalist stage, which meant we were top 20 in the world for business law and ethics. And um, because we uh, got that, we were actually first, um, one of the first people in our school to make it to international finalists uh, in the past four or five years. Okay. Thank you, Vic. Now back to the studio. Now let's take a look at this month's featured artist, Anaya Tamakalo. Hi, I'm Danielle Farrell, and this is Anaya Tamakalo, a.k.a. E-Swag. Yeah. All right, so I hear you're a drummer. Is there anything that inspired you, and when did you start? Uh, nothing really inspired me. Uh, this was a gift from God. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> and... Um, I started, uh, I've been playing for like 15 years now, so yeah, still going strong. <laughs> That's really cool. So are you trying to um, go into college with this because you're a senior? So is there, do you want to continue drumming? Um, do you want to continue it in uh, college? Is it going to be your major? Yeah, uh, I'm taking music as a minor and going to take business as a major, but like, yeah, I still want to play. Uh, That's my goal, just keep on playing in college. Earlier we saw you playing the piano, like, is there any other instruments you play? Yeah, um, I'm starting to teach myself a lot, like, uh, obviously I play drums, um, I learned how to play ukulele, I'm playing piano now, a little bit of guitar, uh, now, like, my biggest instrument I want to play now is sax, so hopefully I can master that too. Wow, he's like a prodigy. Alright, so can we see you play a little drums? Yeah. <laughs> Now 
Now let's take a look at this month's music critics with Maddie and Jenny. I'm not Jenny. And I'm not Maddie, but, but she, she is. is. And this month on Music Critics, we'll be exploring Drake's new album, Nothing Was the Same. Nothing Was the Same was released September 24th. This is Drake's third studio album. The deluxe album that I have right here has 15 songs featuring mainstream songs, Started From the Bottom, and Just Hold On, We're Going Home. My personal favorite song on the track actually is Wu-Tang Forever. Uh, this song is pure perfection. The beat, the lyrics, everything is great. I highly recommend that you purchase this album. It's being sold like basically everywhere. Every, audiences everywhere are preparing for Drake's solo tour, Would You Like a Tour? On this tour, he features artists like Miguel and Future. Please go out and support him on October 27th at the Prudential Center in Newark or October 28th at the Barclays Center in New York City. And that was this month's Music Critics. Signing, Signing out. out. Now let's take a look at viral YouTube videos with Matt McGowan and Elijah Fields. Hi, this is Matt McGowan and Elijah Fields Hey, with viral YouTube videos. And our first video is called People Are Awesome. And I really like this one because it shows uh, really extreme sports and amazing things that people can do. It's one of my favorite videos I've seen so far. Here it is. So Elijah, what did you think? Well, I like the stunts. Um, it was cool and it was totally a stream. So I recommend people to watch it and I think they would like it. And this is Yilvis with our second video, The Fox. And I think that people really want to know what does The Fox say? Um, it's a really funny parody video. It's gotten like millions of views. I, when I watched it, I just couldn't stop watching it and I really enjoyed it. And uh, here it is. Hope you like it. What do you think of that amazing video? The video was good, funny. Uh, I like how the fox was dancing and singing. I think people will love it and they should watch it. Now let's take a look at this month's Look at the Past with Caleb Rempert. For our first look at the past, we're going to travel back in time until we reach October 2002 edition of Rare News. Anchor Annie Weber is introducing a story about a tree that was planted in a monument set in place to remember about the 9-11 attacks on the World Trade Center and the Pentagon. the one year anniversary of the 9-11 tragedy, the high school held a tree dedication ceremony on Evergreen Field. The tree was planted there sometime last year, and the plaque dedicating the tree to the victims was then placed. The turnout was very large, and the school became very close on that day. Note the size of the tree that is compared to today. Now let's take a look at this month's Fashion and Fads with Mallory Cunningham and Jody Cornwell. And welcome to this month's edition of Fashion and Fads. First we have Maz and Jeff Kahn. Jeff Kahn's wearing Vans, a cardigan, and some khakis. Maz is wearing a tie front shirt, boots, and a cute necklace. 
Next, we have Kevin Kirby and Nicole Baldani. Kevin's wearing a blue polo, khakis, and sperries, and Nicole's wearing a slouchy sweater and boots. Next, we have Joe and Taylor. Joe is dressed up today wearing a tie, khakis, and vans, while Taylor's wearing Uggs, a sweater, and leggings. Next, we have Anaris and Zach. Anaris is wearing a slouchy shirt, jeans, and flip-flops, and Zach's wearing a polo, jeans, and Uggs. That's it for this month. Thanks for watching. Now back to the studio. Now let's go to Trevor Skaines with sports. Thanks, Kelsey. The football team won the first game of the season against Governor Livingston, making it the second straight year the team has won their season opener. Patrick Hankels got the chance to catch up with a member of the team. Hello, I'm Patrick Hankels on location with Ryan Jensen of the Scotch Plains football team. How you doing, Ryan? How are you? I'm doing just fine. Um, so what goals did the football team have this year? Um, well, we want to be undefeated. We want to win a state championship. That's always a goal of ours. But we have two tough losses that we've already had. We're one and two right now with the win to Governor Livingston the first week. So right now we're just trying to you know, get as many wins as we possibly can, trying to make the state playoffs and see where we go from there. All right, uh, how does the team look this year? We're young. We're young, but we're good. We're quick. You know, a lot of small guys, not as big as last year, with Jamie Kaiser, Billy Castori, you know. So, I mean, we're quick, we're small. We All right, and uh, any promising players on the varsity team itself? We do. We have Rashawn Gary, who's gotten many, many looks by high D1 schools. Uh, we have Amendo Thomas, our quarterback, Kobe White. We have a uh, sophomore, Markel. He's very good. He's the backup quarterback, but he's played a lot since Amendo's been hurt. And, and you know, we have a good offensive line. Everybody's new on the offensive line, so they're good. So, I mean, we have a lot of good players. All right, great. Uh, that was Ryan Jensen of the Scotch Plains family football team, and uh, now back to the studio. The boys' soccer team had a great start to the season, not letting up a goal until the fourth game of the season. Let's go to Elijah Fields for an on-location report. So, how's the um, season going so far? Uh, well, I wish it could be going better, but we're not doing so poorly. Uh, we have a few losses, but we have more wins, but unfortunately... Uh, we're not playing the best as we can right now. Uh, I think we just need to work harder during practice and training, and that will carry over into games. What are we looking forward to? Um, well, hopefully the counties and the states really, uh, really got to step up our game for that, and got to train harder and uh, if we want to make it far. Thank you, Danny, for the interview, and back to the studio. The girls' soccer team has won their first six games of the season. Caleb Rember caught up with a member of the team. Hello, I'm Caleb Rembrandt on location with Caroline Babis. So, Caroline, you're on the varsity soccer team, right? Yes. So, um, how was your records this season? Good. We're 9-0 and right now. Oh, that's very good. A certain moment of this year that stands out in your head or that sets the point for the season? Well, we haven't gotten to counties and states yet, so nothing too exciting has happened. But we played Westfield last week or two weeks ago, and it was, like, awesome beating them. That's good. So um, is there anything you expect for the rest of the season? Um, well, we are number one seed for counties, so we're looking to win that, and then we can move further on in states. So we're just going to keep working hard and see what comes. The girls' gymnastics team was ranked number 11th in the state, highest ranking in school history. Let's go on location. Hi, I'm Jody Cornwell, and I'm on location with Allie Guerra, a member of the varsity gymnastics team. So, Allie, how's your season going so far? Pretty good. We've had tough losses, but we're doing better than we expected. Good. Okay, so how did the Cougar Invitational go? Good. We tied for second place. That's awesome. Um, what's your favorite event? The balance beam. That's it. Now back to the studio. The boys and girls cross country team both won their first dual meets against Elizabeth. Matt McGowan got to discuss the two teams' season so far with a member of the team. I'm Matt McGowan, and this is Andrew Smith, and I'm here with them for Cross Country Interview. Um, so, Smitty, uh, how's the team going so far? Uh, we're doing really well so far. I mean, we're definitely the best we've been in a while, and I have pretty high expectations for what we're going to do in the future. And uh, what's your win-loss record so far? Right now we're three and zero. We have a big meet against Westfield next week. We haven't beaten them in a while, but I think we have a good chance. So, um, what does Mr. Cagle think of the team? Uh, he's really excited about the team. I mean, like I said, we're the best we've been in a while, and he expects us to do well in in the upcoming meets. So I'd say he's pretty happy. The girls' tennis team has struggled this year, starting the season 0-5. The Raider volleyball team, through eight games, has a record of six and two. Amani Nathaniel caught up with a member of the team to discuss their success. 
with junior Brianna Johnson. She is on the varsity volleyball team. So Brianna, how's the season been going? Um, the season's good. Um, we're currently 7-0. and We lost to JFK and Westfield in um, our, our home matches. What are your goals for this season? Um, my goal is this season is to at least get a high seed, well, as a team, to get a high seed in counties and also personally for me to um, get kills and also blocks because I'm middle on the um, varsity volleyball team. So, Brianna, who is your toughest opponent? Um, I would have to say our toughest opponent was probably Westfield because they're a high seed and ranked in volleyball. So we had to really like try our best and work really hard. We couldn't really slack off on um, any of our to gain our points. Thank you, Brianna. Now back to the studio. Bianca Di Maria caught up with Male Athlete of the Month, James Murphy. Hi, I'm Bianca Di Maria on location with James Murphy, the Male Athlete of the Month. Hi, I'm James. So James, how's soccer going for you? So far, it's going pretty well. What's your record? We're right now six and two. And how many goals have you scored? I've scored 10 goals. And what, what position do you play? I play center midfield. What is the key to your success? Uh, just a lot of hard work. How does it feel to play varsity soccer? Uh, it feels good. I like playing with a bunch of good guys, a uh, good group of friends. Are you going to continue playing soccer for your high school career? Yeah, hopefully, we'll see. Well, thank you. Good luck to the rest of your season. And now back to the studio. Cameron Smith caught with a female athlete of the month, Brooke Enners. Now, Brooke, how's the season going this year? Um, it's going very well so far. We're seven and two, which is better than expected, and we're a young team, so hopefully we can use that as a learning experience. Has there been a highlight of the season this year so far? Um, I mean, we beat Ken Place in two games, which was really good for us because last year they're kind of our rivals, and even though they lost some players, it was a really big win overall. Do you have any goals to accomplish by the end of the season? Oh, well, we have a goal actually today because it will be Stack's 100th win if we win. So that's kind of a goal for us to get her 100th win for her. And do you plan on playing in college? Um, yeah, I hope to play in college and continue because I love this sport a lot. Right. Thanks, Brooke. Back to the studio. That wraps it up for sports. Now let's get back to Kayla and Kelsey. That wraps it up for the October edition of Raider News. Have a safe and happy Halloween.